just drive around this landmass, take in the mountains, take in the air, take in the evening shadows and such like. So I think this is the future for golf for sure. I think Tether was leading the way uh, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. There were others that looked at this piece of landscape and couldn't see a great golf course through it. Uh, I saw it the first time I walked out on it. I saw the rolling topography and the high desert vegetation and thought this is a great golf course site. I know that my style of design will work really well in this type of landscape. <laughs> I got started in the business uh, well before I ever knew I'd gotten started in the business. My father uh, is a superintendent, a greenskeeper as they call him back in Scotland. I, I, back in the mid 60s he uh, was the eldest son of a uh, poor family in the, the Scottish Highlands and as the eldest had to go out to work and the only job he could get was out on a golf course. He was 14. And then I was raised right on a golf course. The first golf course I remember was Glasgow Golf Club, which is the one of the fifth oldest, I think, in the world. And then when I was in my teenage years, my father got the job at Glen Eagles in Scotland, which is a big famous resort like the Greenbrier or something, one of these old style resorts built in the 20s. And I went to high school there and loved uh, everything about the business of golf. I wasn't, I never have been a great player. I'm, a, I'm your average guy. I, you know, I play off an eight handicap right now, which is the lowest I've ever been. I was 14 for a long time. So I love golf, but not like a tour pro loves golf. I love the look of golf. I love the adventure of exploring a landscape with golf being the excuse. My desire here was to create a golf course that had the flavor of Bandon Dunes, but in a, in a golf residential community. Uh, you know, the things that we did here, the, the only 50% of the land is being used for residential, 50% of it is open space. The golf corridors are 30, 40% wider than they are uh, conventionally. I think we have 400 foot corridors uh, through which the golf plays, so the homes are all set well back. Uh, and the convention in my business is that resort golf, uh, people only play it once or maybe twice. And for that reason, the golf course has to be very uh, primary colors would be my description. Black, white, blue, green, you know, nothing hidden, everything up there. Well, I don't think that's true. I, I, I dispel that. But people still want that adventure. When you go mountain biking in the hills or skiing down the mountains, the adventure is the important thing. So the unexpected is, is the very thing you remember. You wouldn't be able to describe Tethero as a Lynx course. Uh, the, the classic golf that's played in the British Isles is, is what I think I'm all about. I, I want people to have the same fun playing these courses uh, in, in North America that they would have doing in the, uh, in the British Isles. Just like Bandon Dunes, just like uh, uh, St Andrews, you know, the, the comments are, well, it looks fantastic, but it's too difficult for me. My game's not up to it. Uh, and I keep explaining to people, this is exactly what the case was at Bandon, and, and it is at St Andrews now, and it has been on every course I've ever done. The, the courses are set up to be uh, uh, naturalistic, appear challenging, uh, but playable. Uh, there, there's, I have no desire to beat people up. My, my business is based on people having fun playing golf. The biggest thrill I maybe get when I sit at the bar quietly at Bandon Dunes and no one knows who I am, and I hear group after group coming in and, and 
vibrating with excitement about how much fun they had and why they, you know, they didn't quite play as well as they might have done, but they still had fun. They, they didn't lose a ball. I didn't lose a ball. And for many golfers, that not losing a ball defines whether they had a good day or a bad day. Not losing a ball doesn't matter what they shot. They obviously didn't play that bad. Uh, and that simple uh, ethos is very important to me. I want people to have fun and on a playable golf course. Our objective in design is to have the golf course fit as seamlessly as we possibly can into its existing landscape. One of the first things I look at on almost every site is the palette of natural vegetation. And here, when I first saw this site, I saw an absolutely amazing palette of natural, low-growing, high-desert vegetation. And I knew intuitively that that could be woven into the design of the golf course and make the golf course feel like it, it's gently winding its way through rather than uh, having an edge that's this is the golf course and this is everything outside it. I wanted it to feel like the outside and the golf course were completely intertwined. The day is won by someone who can hit that low running shot. He doesn't have to be a strong person or, or she. It, it's about using your brain rather than using your forearms uh, and, and thinking your way around the golf courses and using the contouring to make the ball run. The way that this course has been designed is all about the ball running along the ground. It's not about flying it through the air. So if you're smart and, and think that way, you've got a much better chance of scoring. People love the look of it. You know, they love the fact that nature is dominating. You know, the, it looks like nature's taking back over, which is exactly what we wanted. One of the things that we were keen to do, we'd worked so hard to create a golf course that, that m m melded seamlessly into this landscape. We didn't want to offend that landscape by using these very highly tuned grasses uh, that, that are maintenance intensive with pesticides and water and chemicals. So we wanted to use grasses that would naturally want to grow here. Uh, these grasses are, are indigenous to these kind of climates. The 94% the fescue. Fescue is what you see, all these bunch grasses that grow all over here. These are all fescues. This is what wants to grow here naturally if we didn't mess with it. Uh, and because we use the same grass everywhere, we can change these mow lines as the golf course matures. We can change these mow lines next year or 10 years from now. And these are exactly the sorts of grasses that, that thrive in this relatively harsh environment. When you see the construction begin, you think to yourself, how in heaven's name is he ever going to turn this into a golf course? But he has that talent. I didn't have that. Uh, but I'm delighted to be a part of it. And to walk tall with him is something I've... I get emotional. <laughs> Beautiful, wonderful thing to do. Without doubt, the inspiration to my career has been my father. Uh, back in Scotland, I, I spent the first 27 years of my life being Jimmy Kidd's boy. He cast a huge shadow, which I always found it difficult to get away from. And then a few years, well, many years later, when I was uh, in my early 30s, my father came out to Bandon Dunes just after it opened. Uh, he'd been there a few times, but this was maybe a year after it had opened. And early one morning, he set off across the course. You know, the sun was rising. He just fancied a walk. And he's out, you know, third tees or fourth green or somewhere out there. And one of the rangers caught up with him. He said, excuse me, sir, you know, you, you can't be out here if you're not playing golf. And he said, well, I'm actually, I'm Jimmy Kidd. And the ranger said, well, <laughs> frankly, I don't care who you are. You know, you can't be out here unless you're playing golf. And he then had to swallow his pride just a little and say, well, I'm actually, I'm David Kidd's father. And he said, well, that's fine. You can stay out here. First time so that in my was, life. That was the, I think that was maybe a tipping point where, where uh, the, the son of turned into the father of. He was the, uh, the guy that brought me into this business. Even, he even told me not to. Uh, but I came into it from a design and construction standpoint and he came at it from a, a, a maintenance and operation standpoint. Uh, and he retired uh, two or three years ago and as my team got a little bit bigger and we started to get involved in different projects, I dragged him out of retirement and now he spends quite a bit of his time. He, he flies around the world uh, with me or independently. We've been able to, to go from uh, the highlands of Scotland, you know, loving golf and, and take it all over the world. 
Uh, and, and that's been a thrill for both of us. We, we sit there in the evenings with a, uh, a, a beer or a scotch and thinks to ourselves, and this is amazing, we're bringing golf as we know it uh, to other places in the world where golf is already, but not the golf we know. Uh, the team that I have are all young guys. You know, 